Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought for Wednesday, January the 20th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile. We're going through the book of James and we're in the middle of chapter 1. So this morning um, we're just going to be dealing with verses 19 to 21. And uh, James says in these verses, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Have you ever had someone speak to you who, uh, quite frankly, just ticks you off to the point where your, your face gets red and you either want to tell the person off or you end up wanting to give them a good punch in the head? Well, um, if that's you sometimes, uh, you're not alone because I've been there. And... Um, I remember when I was a young man working at the sawmill uh, for my summer employment while going to Bible college, there was uh, a man, and that man, he knew that I was a Christian, he knew that I was a Bible college student, and he loved the idea that he could make me run. So he was operating the equipment that would feed the saws, and I was a deck man. And this man would purposely tangle up the logs on purpose, because he really didn't care. But uh, he knew that I was responsible for straightening out the mess, so he just loved to see me run. And as I would work like a slave trying to untangle these logs, he would be laughing in his booth at me. And uh, no sooner would I would clean one up, and then he'd flip some switch and cause a tangle somewhere else. And he just, day after day, he would laugh when I had these messes to deal with. I tell you, I, I was angry at this man. I was angry, and it tested my Christian virtue to the very limit. There were times where I felt like running up there and drifting him with my fist, and I, I even thought at times that it would feel good just to kill the guy. Like, I felt horrible about how conflicted I was inside with these temptations to dwell on my anger. Well, maybe you've experienced something like that as well. And uh, sometimes when we encounter things like that as human beings, we need to step back from the situations that are so emotionally charged. We have to step back inside and, and listen to their voices, asking ourselves, well, why are they doing what they're doing? Genuinely, when you take time to listen to what other people are saying through their activities, you'll find the keys to their heart. And maybe that gives you a little bit more understanding. And it helps you to pray for them effectively. God wants us to represent Him well. And that means responding to those things that are unrighteously done. Uh, maybe towards us, maybe just towards society in general or other people in general. Um, it's important for us to listen to the voices around us. And speaking about listening, um, it's more than just listening to the actions of someone. When someone rages and says something, um, you know, a good listener uh, recognizes how important it is to communicate with other people and to listen to what they say as though we believe it was valuable. And, and sometimes, even if it doesn't appear to be valuable, there might be some value hidden underneath the uh, exterior uh, roughness of what's how it's being said to us. You see, when we show the uh, other person that uh, their ideas or thoughts um, are valuable, um, they're actually more uh, likely to respond to us uh, with respect when we produce our own ideas. Now, that's not always the case, but a gentle answer does turn away wrath. So if you're dealing with an angry and reasonable person who's spouting off stuff that's just wrong or doing stuff that's wrong, and you treat them with dignity and love, 
um, you're more likely going to be able to communicate with them in the end in a way that fosters growth and understanding. And I know this is difficult. I mean, this is where Christianity hits the pavement, right? Um, much of our anger seems to be self-centered uh, rather than being other-centered. Uh, being quick to listen and other-centered, being slow to speak and other-centered, and being slow to anger is showing evidence that we are thinking about others before ourselves. And really, that's a scriptural principle. A scriptural principle, I should say. When we let out our anger, anger uh, in a way that's out of control, it leads us from pursuing the righteous path that pleases God and into defending our own agenda. Now, this being said, not all anger is wrong because we can be angry at something that's unrighteous. God is sometimes angry when people do things that are unrighteous. He's holy. He's righteous and he cannot tolerate sin. And thus he's angry at sin. Um, does being angry at sin make God a sinner? Of course not. Um, his anger is at sin itself. And likewise, God calls us to have the same kind of uh, mind as he does. So when we're angry, uh, we must be careful, though, not to be angry for the wrong reasons. Um, there can be anger over unrighteousness, but uh, and there's nothing we can do about that feeling that comes. I mean, it's righteous indignation, right? Um, but there's sometimes where we're angry, I think, as Christians, and it's unrighteous. It's not righteous. Uh, we might be angry, for instance, at a person because they're rich and doesn't that person doesn't need to work like we do for our living. And, well, is that anger righteous? Perhaps it's out of envy, right? We might be angry at people who don't agree with our wrong decisions. Maybe we do wrong things and we sin and then we're upset when people are angry at us. Well, maybe it is that uh, we're intolerant of correction and we need to adjust our attitude. Um, maybe we're tempted to be angry at people who don't act like us or look like us or have the same culture as us and we marginalize them and categorize them because it's easier to do that, to put a framework around them and then to, to treat circumstances individually. And, uh, you know, we get angry and become racists. Well, isn't that being divisive and, and judgmental? Um, James warns Christians and asks Christians to get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. The world is filled with evil. Um, we're swimming in it every day. It's all around us. And we might be tempted to do wrong in the midst of, our, of living out our faith. Um, but God has given us what we need to surrender to him and to make good decisions when we see things that make us angry. And sometimes we just need to take a breath and consciously turn our way, our eyes away from uh, what we're tempted to do. Maybe getting even or defending our own agenda and, and turn our eyes to Jesus. Well, what does that mean practically? Well, what does it mean to turn our eyes on Jesus? Well, what it means is to accept the Bible and the Word of God as His Word, and purposely take our emotion and turn off, turn on the off switch in the middle of it all. Self-control. Turn our off switch off. Look to the Word of God and say, God, what, what do you have to say about this issue that's making me angry? Is it me? And if it's not me, if it's the other person that's doing something that's wrong or whatever, how do I respond to that in a way that pleases you? Um, that's what it means to turn our gaze upon Jesus. Um, do I need to put an attitude of mine into check? I know that I'm a sinner from birth, Lord. My natural inclination is to sin in my anger. I feel an urge, a compulsion even, to satisfy my own flesh. And God, I, I recognize that your ways are higher than my ways. Even as the heavens are higher than the earth, so I choose to set aside my fleshly anger issues so in my anger I do not sin and I turn to you, Lord, for counsel. 
Then I look to the Word of God. And what does the Word of God tell me under such circumstances? This is why it's so important to know your Bible. For example, if I'm living my life in the community and someone who is not a believer, who has an opinion that's morally wrong, confronts me or, or says something publicly that enrages me, what am I to do with this? What I, what I do with this makes all the difference in the world, friends. Um, how can I have a disdain for sin, yet maintain a loving, caring, and righteous attitude towards the sinner? Um, when Christians display a holier-than-thou attitude of condemning a non-Christian's beliefs and actions by confronting them in their rage, we become the judge. God, however, says, let me be the judge. In the end, he's going to judge the world, but asks us to step aside and let him uh, have the say. Now, that's why it's written in Romans chapter 12, 18 to 20. If it is possible on your part, live at peace with everyone. Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, say the, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, Give him a drink, for in doing so you will keep heap burning coals on his head. This is not our position to uh, take the part of God and pour our wrath out on the unbelievers. Our position is to love and to care for them. Yes, we say what's right and what's wrong. We stand up for what's right and what's wrong in our own convictions, and we voice and express our concerns out of love, but then we show them mercy and we show them love in place of their anger towards us. This is food for thought.